Good afternoon, everyone. It's Chrissy from Solstice ATR. I hope everybody's doing great. I want to just say happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I want to keep this video very short and brief to the point with a couple of different ideas for the coming week since we had a short week and it was Thanksgiving. Friday was half a session. Thursday was a day off. Wednesday was a full day. But most people were out of town by usually Wednesday, you know, heading to see their families, friends, and loved ones. I hope this season would be great for you and Christmas is coming along in the next month or so. So let's pay attention to what the market can offer us. You can find me on Twitter, Solstice, Instagram, and you can DM me. Remember, we're not a broker dealer. Our past performance doesn't indicate our future results. Use it to your own risk and data may not be copied without our permission. You can check the website policy or get in contact with us. Let's go to the last slide. I want to say thank you for everyone for watching this video. It takes us a little bit of time to get these videos up and running. Uh, once we do ed the editing and once we get it up on YouTube, hit the thumbs up. Secondly, that YouTube video is always free. Let's go to the first slide that I have up here. And I have the NASDAQ, the S&P, the NASDAQ, as well as the Dow. You can see in this uh, chart, we have recovered from the 250 simple moving average. If I take this high from here to this uh, midpoint here, 50, the previous case before the COVID uh, pre-market, before the COVID-19, uh, February 2020, that was the March low. If I duplicate this oval, this will give you, if I take this high to this area, you can see that mama bear, and the overall, I'm going to duplicate them so you can see what I'm doing. So if I take this high from here to this low, you can see where the duplication. And if I duplicate it again, we can see that we came back 50% of this move and we bounced off right of that 250 simple moving average. So this is the big daddy bear, which we never had. We, only in, we came back to that 50% and retraced up. In order to have a bearish market, and the sentiment has to change and become into a bear economy market. We have to basically retest the November. Remember, the NASDAQ hit this area. ARC management hit this area, as well as Netflix hit the 2017 area right in this area. So what I want everyone to understand that in order to enter a bearish market, and the Federal Reserve Board has to change their sentiment, keep printing Instead of printing more money, they still keep interest rates high. We know we have something coming up in December as well, maybe one in January. And I think there should be a slowdown. We can see we had a nice recovery. We cleared the 250 to 200 SMA, tested the 18 simple moving average we for two, three weeks, and we eventually broke up. This week was a short week, remember, on light volume. Light volume usually kills fuzzy. We retested the 50 simple moving average, and if I right-click on it, you can see that it says 50 simple moving average. We are retesting it. Can the NASDAQ, S&P, and the Dow do much better? So what I want to do is use the SPX, the NDX, the Dow to show the differences in weakness and strength on the weekly and the daily chart. Let's go to the daily chart first before we can come back to the chart we can see on the daily chart we have cleared on the combination of the three the 200 simple moving average and we are trying to retest the 250 we're above the 50 simple moving average the 116 and the 18 simple moving average can we clear this area possibly to retest this up channel where we broke down from because if you can look at it it shows march 26 2020 the low and march 17 of 2022 the low and that was a linear regression channel we eventually broke it here we looked below it can we continue to get back to this upside we are in a double bottom trying to retest this area here that we broke down from you can see that oval here or that triangle that i have here this on the there is a gap in the overnight action if i put it on the four hours so let's go now back to the weekly we're going to go time frame set a daily we're going to go five here we're going to go back to the weekly push okay and i want to start with first the spx to show in relationship and the dow where we are next to the nasdaq we can see we retested this 50 percent annual fibonacci and bounced off it correctly off the 200 SMA, but we missed the 250. This was the COVID pre-market, COVID-19 
slump, then the U-turn, we consolidated in this area, retested this upper movement between uh, August, September, October, rallied up. We cleared the 18 simple moving average. We are on the 89 EMA, but we have the 116 simple moving average. If I right click on it, it'll tell you this is my simple moving average, 116 simple daily moving average. And we have the 50 right above us, similar to what I showed on the prior. In order for us to break out, we have to clear this linear regression channel and retest the 50 simple moving average. So 4235 is in play, 4226 as well as the 4065 uh, has to clear in this area in order to run up. And if we fall below the 3923, you have to be careful of it because we can come back to the 3826 and eventually fall down to the 36. 40. So we want to trade what we see, not what we think, and we have to pay attention to what the charts offer us. Let's go right now to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's going to be the dollar sign DJ. Oops. Dollar sign DJ I. That's for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We can see on the weekly chart. We have done very nicely the 250, the 200 SMA, the 18, the 89, and we cleared the 50. We are on a run up. This was the prior downtrend that we broke down. This is no longer valid. We can remove it. So we're going to remove this drawing. We, we have cleared that downtrend trying to push higher. Does this continue to clear the 35 1490 let's call it 35.5 or do we fall back in this range to retest the 50 or the 89 EMA before continuing higher in the Dow Joe industrial average you know in the Dow Joe industrial you can know where Exxon is in relationship to where the Dow is that's part of the component so let's take a look at now the NDX which is the NASDAQ 100 we can see we are in a lower situation than the SVX. And what I wanted to show, remember that consolidation that we had in the SVX, we can see where the NASDAQ retested this area, where we can see that this candle here and this candle here was retested by this candle. We missed the 250. This was what territory was this in? This was basically in July 2020 before we had the rally come back retest bounce up retest and the november we took off that was the january march low of 2021 we went up as high as here then in march in uh, i should say january 3rd of 2022 we collapsed and the nasdaq was going down double topped here couldn't make it fell further tried to rally we missed the 50 simple moving average fell back down and now we are coming from that almost double bottom trying to retest the 18 simple moving average does the nasdaq clear this 18 to continue to the backside of the january uh, 4th of 2021 in order to clear this area in order to run back up in the nasdaq 100. Let's take a look at the RTY, which is RUT or the IWM. We can see that uh, the Russell 2000 has double bottomed. It's creating a W shape, has not cleared the 50 simple moving average or the 89 or the 116, but it is above the 200, the 18 simple and the 250. Does this mean it finds support to run back to the 38? the 116 and the 50 Fibonacci. We're going to pay to the small cap attention as well as the mid cap, which I did last week in the video. Let's go right now and take a look at what we can see on the SPX in relationship to the NASDAQ way we showed you the weekly. What I want to do is go two years out. This was the NASDAQ retest. This was ARC management. And this was the pre-market COVID. So does this mean that we are heading to a new change in trend or is this a lower high in that linear regression downtrend before we can come back down here and continue higher i'm not bearish we trade usually on daily basis and weekly basis what we see not what we think remember to protect your capital so we're going to go two years 
Instead of weekly, we're going to go back to a daily chart. It's going to be a little bit of compression here, a lot of information, consolidation in these charts. So when I push it down, we can see where the January was the low to this high, and we rallied up. So if I take a Fibonacci from here, regular Fib, and I drew the drawing from the January 4th, this is the January 4th till the December. This was, remember, the January 3rd of 2022. So this is our high. So we can see we have cleared the zero line, the 78 coming to the 61. If I draw it the other way around, which is inverted, it'll show you the resistance. Remove drawing. And if I draw from this height here all the way down to the January, we can see that we cleared the 23. We are coming to the 38% Feb. And this is the reason why I wanted to show this, because we are heading above the 23, coming to a little resistance line. And we have the 200 SMA in the backside of this channel, as well as the 250. So it is very important to understand that we are in, still in a downtrend but we are trying to make a change in the overall market. And here on the daily, you can see where the gap is in the SPX. Does this mean we're going to refill this area to come back to the 42, uh, 42, 36, 35 area, 4200? Or do we fall back in to the 39, 23 area before continuing back up? So this is why I wanted to show it. I want to show you the micro GC, which is gold. We can see that gold because of the dollar. Let's go to the weekly three year. We can see we came back after three bottoms, a nice run, retested the 18 and bounced back up on this week's light volume. Does this mean gold has found an area of consolidation? Does it clear this congestion in this area in order to break up? to the 50, 116, and the 50 Fibonacci, or does it fall back in to the 200, find some support here before the second bounce back up in gold? Let's take a look at the dollar sign DXY, and I'm going to use the VIX. You can see I have on this weekly chart a lot of Fibonacci's, but what I want to usually do is the monthly and the weekly, and I want to show you that there is weakness in the dollar on the daily chart and the four hours. So let's go to one year daily. We can see that the dollar created this lower high, and eventually it broke through that double bottom. It's creating another H pattern. If I consider this is the handle, this is the H. Does it break through the 200 simple moving average to come back to the 250 and find consolidation in this area? Or does it U-turn to come back up? So this is my monthly measured move on the charts. So I can take it off so to make it more simpler for everyone. But I left it on so that way people will understand why. If I edit this property and I go edit property where it shows 78 and I make this minus two and i put a straight line we know we where our 200 simple uh, fibonacci extension is and if i do remove the 61.8 from the top that measured move and what i do i put a minus 2.272 or 223 and i make it into a smaller little dash line i know where my extensions are to the bottom in the dollar in case we fall through that 200% which we retested once on the monthly measured move. Remember this coming month, we're gonna have a new profile. We're not at the end of November. We're still in November 26. It's gonna be a short week till November, till December. First, when it kicks in, I have to change those fibs. So that channel, if we fall through it, I look for the 200 SMA and eventually the extension of the weekly Fibonacci for the week from high to low, which shows me on the charts where that extension is minus 25 and minus 50, minus 80 and 200. I'd like to see the dollar in this area before the second bounce back up for the market to get a more relief to the upside, then eventually it'll come back to reset a little bit before the Christmas rally. So if I go time frame intraday and we do 15 days on a four hour chart, 
it shows you where the fibs are coming from on the daily. And this is the reason why I use the monthly measured move in relationship to the weekly high and the weekly low on the chart in relationship to where the 100, 150, 180, 200 up. And the same side, we have the 25, 50, 80, and 200 to the downside. So either way, we know where the dollar is in relationship to the overall market. Let's go back to the daily chart. And what we want to do is go look at the VX or the VIX. I'll do the VIX, the ETF for the uh, for the uh, for the overall market fear gauge, we noticed we were coming in a downtrend. We had lower highs and eventually we broke up here. We broke up here. We looked up where these were higher lows from here and we fell back down in the VIX. This area was a gap in the profile, which we can zoom in and we can see that we filled it. If it comes back through this gap and comes back to this wedge, then the market will fall. If it's going to continue, we look for this consolidation in this area where the VIX will find some kind of settlement around the $19. I hope this is helping you to understand the market. So let's go back to the S&P 500. And what I want to do in the S&P, we're going to use the micro ES. In the micro ES, we can see that on the daily chart we have cleared if i zoom back down we can see we coming to the 200 simple moving average does this clear it clear this channel clear the 250 to come back to up here where i'm looking for that 42 26 36 area or do we fall back to the 39 23 and eventually back to the 38 65 to find support in order to continue higher enjoy your weekend enjoy your thanksgiving with family and friends in this long weekend i hope you had a nice one and i look forward to seeing you monday sharp early take care over and out